Hello, hello. So, another long time frame, but relatively quick news update here. You know, I've kind of been holding out for this organized play update that I was hoping would come at some point last week, but we did not get it quite until yesterday. Um, but yeah, we'll just get right into that. We have an update from Josh Massey, the new head of organized play. Uh, people have been kind of waiting on this because they weren't sure what, how much he might change about the current system while it's kind of midstream. You know, he doesn't necessarily want to completely upend it, but, you know, obviously a new organized play com director comes in with tons and tons and tons of experience in the field. He's going to want to change some things, right? So what we have done is there will be no more needing to qualify for major regionals. Uh, that was kind of anticipated by by virtue of the way they ran these like last minute get two sps the night before by paying ten dollars and you don't even need to show up <laughs> events at each of the major regionals this time so uh clearly they're, they're not really interested in making people qualify for major regionals if you want to go to st louis or to you know the one in australia or the one in eu for season two you can just go you don't need to make extra trips to go find some lqs if you're kind of remote i know a couple people you know, that's a bit of a struggle for them, and they don't need to worry about that anymore. Uh, the Season 2 EU event has, in fact, not uh, made it to Spain. Uh, that was the original plan. It seems like that was a little too aspirational. They couldn't quite pull that together, so it is going to be moved back to the UK. It is going to be in Nottingham, UK, uh, as opposed to Sheffield, which is where I think all the other UK events have been. Uh, I would need a UK person to tell me the significance of that. I don't know if that's a different store that's up there, or maybe there's a, a convention or something that weekend. I think it's a little more north of Sheffield. Um, but it is a slightly different part of the UK, but still, you know, in the UK for the Season 2 EU Major Regional as usual. And also, as suspected and rumored, uh, the Charlotte event from Season 3 has been moved to Atlanta. Uh, this comes with a date swap. It is going to swap dates with the EU Season 3 Regional. So the EU one will now be on the last weekend of October. And the uh, now Atlanta Major Regional will be on the first weekend of October. This coincides with some sort of convention called DreamHack that's going to be in Atlanta that weekend. So the presumption is they are either hoping to hold the Major Regional there. Or maybe they'll have a demo deployment there and have the Regional across the street or something like that. Uh, which is something they did for the HLC. But... Probably not a coincidence, right, that they've moved it and changed the date to be on the same weekend as this convention. So you keep that in mind. Maybe look up the convention if it seems interesting to you. That might make you know, that trip a little more compelling. Uh, but aside from those two changes, we did not get any sort of surprise moves or date changes or anything like that. Both of these things were kind of rumored and known if you've been you know, following these videos or following the tea leaves. So uh, good to see that everything else is... You know, maybe we don't have the venues nailed down yet, but we're still pretty sure we're going to have all these events when and where we said we were going to have them. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, they are, as part of this, when you know they don't need the major regional qualification anymore, they don't need the SP anymore. You are still going to see SP on your account, but it's not going to matter for anything. Uh, they're doing it with webcam regionals, which were kind of a pasted on way for people to get SP. And a little bit of, you know, getting some early meta reads, that sort of thing. But they're doing away with those. Uh, just not really something that belongs in your, you know, major Nats World Chase circuit at this point in 2024. Uh, so that that is, you know, kind of gets rid of the last of the official UVS run webcam events. Um, but obviously the community is still allowed to try to run these things. Uh, so they've said in, in their Discord, I believe earlier today or yesterday, that it will get a formal announcement once some of these specifics are nailed down. But they do have plans to uh, open up the tournament channels of their official Discord for community-run events to try to use. So that if you want to run an event, you don't necessarily have to make your own Discord. You don't need to worry about, you know, will it have enough bandwidth? Do I need a certain number of boosts? That sort of thing. Uh, there will be some mechanism by which, you know, I assume you'll have to get approvals and, and get rules changed and things like that. But there'll be some mechanics by which you'll be able to use the official Discord to host tournaments like that. Uh, we'll talk about some of that a little bit later. But there was also, you know, the other big news is a ban errata announcement last week. Uh, Mop Strike was, in fact, banned. Uh, just too much card digging plus disruption in one package uh, for the kinds of six hand size stat stake aggressive decks to, to make use of which are sort of the you know not 
necessarily the top decks in the meta universally, but, but certainly the, the prevailing force in the meta is making sure that you can, if you're not playing one of these, you're ready to handle them. Uh, you know, Mob Strike just doing so much for those decks, uh, including the you know, Younger Togro decks, as well as the Order Endeavor deck that won the Vegas Major Regional. Uh, so they've gone ahead and taken that out. In addition to uh, eradicating Younger Togro himself, his Damage Pump now has a Commit 1 cost on it. Uh, a bit of a lighter errata than what we've seen to other characters. Uh, this definitely keeps him still within the realm of could feasibly still be a pretty good character. It just the decks are going to have to look a little bit different. They might have to bring a little bit of more, more of their own damage. Probably not going to be sacking people on two anywhere near as much, right? Uh, and, you know, going to be a little more exposed to things like Breaker or Pool Flooding. Stuff that's trying to mess with his ability to pass checks might actually matter a little bit now that he's trying to have Foundation Spare to pay all these commit one costs. So, uh, interesting. Uh, maybe in the future, if they have to ride a character, we'll see more like this and less like the, you know, the ones that are just, we want to make absolutely sure this character never does anything ever again at us. Uh, and they also did a bunch of sort of rules and cleanup around it, mostly just fixing typos. Uh, the one notable thing is if you were really counting on them leaving the Rando Spirit Gun Toga 4 loop nonsense alone, they are not. Uh, they have a ratted Rando Spirit Gun that it, it cannot copy non-printed abilities. You don't get to do weird, crazy multiplication things uh, with Rando Spirit Gun and Toga. That is, that is not going to be a thing. Uh, you can still use it in her and, and copy her printed abilities and maybe get something out of that, but... Uh, they're, they're just shutting that down before anybody tries to figure out what the most degenerate thing you can do with that is. Uh, those are the big, big pieces of news. Uh, we mentioned there is already some momentum to do some community-run events. Uh, Let's Talk UBS, David Toomes' channel, uh, is running... Th this was before the OP announcement. He also run a TTS-based Godzilla vs. Girl Power event, where you play a new Godzilla character, a new Girl Power character... Uh, it is a free event. With, it's, it's sort of like a uh, channel anniversary event. I believe it's capped at 64 people. He might raise that to 128. It is filled up. Uh, everyone's kind of registered. Because it's free, people might just back out, though, right? So keep an eye on that uh, and see where that goes. There might be a waiting list. They might go to 128, that sort of thing. But uh, should be fun. Uh, kind of just a one-day event. Might be single elimination, I heard. Uh, but I'll, I'll link to his video uh, explaining that in the description as usual and also you know after the op news you know he's he's working on plans to try to do some kind of you know monthly circuit i know uh, tam cardwell's tried or is actively trying to do that sort of thing as well uh, so there shouldn't be a shortage of webcam events the community is going to try to fill the void and if you know there's really demand for these then we, we should see these be pretty well attended and maybe you know maybe with the uvs games opening their official discord of these things maybe they'll also you know post about them and maybe get them a little more visibility that sort of thing we'll see uh last piece of significant news the godzilla decks were previewed uh over on the gamer which is kind kind of just going to be the place where they show off their challenger decks it seems like because they got uh the critical role decks and i believe they got the bebop trigun decks or they got like just the alt arts for those or something like that uh, but once again, you know, the, the gamer.com got a couple articles detailing just all the cards in each deck. This came a couple days after an official Jasco, but uh, official UVS Games post uh, showing off the some of the like rare, you know, the high end rare cards in the decks. A couple days later, the gamer came out with their articles. So I'll link to all those in the description. You can look at all the cards. They're all in UVS Ultra now as well. Uh, pretty spicy stuff in these decks. You know, a pretty pretty exciting bunch of cards. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit of uh, turning people off of Girl Power a little bit because these Godzilla cards are so cool and a little bit flashier. But, you know, we were just uh, locally going through the, the Girl Power cards, just talking about, you know, pricing for, for Rochester CCG and stuff uh, just before recording this. And I don't know, that's, that's, that's getting a bit of a bad rap. That's, that's pretty nice, uh, you know, compared to how down people are, some people are about a lot of it. But, uh, yeah, that's it for the news update this time. Girl Power pre-releases this weekend. You know, go enjoy that. It should be... It could be a pretty interesting limited format. The characters look reasonably balanced. The damage output might be a little dubious, so we might see that shift towards five-handers uh, maybe being a little strong in this format, but we'll see. Uh, it, never quite know until you start playing it out. Uh, but we don't have, like, those big powerful three sticks that some of the last couple of sets had, for instance, at Common. Um, but the characters themselves look relatively balanced across the board for the most part. There's only a few that probably just aren't good, but most of them are probably reasonably viable. But yeah, I'm excited to try it out. Uh, we'll see how Sealed plays. Maybe we'll get some drafts in. Uh, but yeah, 
have fun with that. Uh, it should not be quite three weeks until my next video. I should at least do a uh, one of my box opening vids for Girl Power, because uh, even if I'm not being sent product, people seem to like those, so I'll probably do one of those. Uh, might might do a couple other things. Might do a, a, not a, a tier list shaped video, just talking about Girl Power characters, that kind of thing. Maybe do a deck building video, etc., etc. But yeah, until then, yeah, have a nice weekend. See you later.